Well, you've made it through all the rock IDs and the paleontology. Now it's time for our last double part final lab. Hope you guys are ready to go like me and Tess are. Let's go Tess. Geology. Okay, last lab, physical stratigraphy. Stratigraphy? Okay, remember that a facies is used to describe a body of rock with specified characteristics. Okay, so we've gone over rock and fossil ID, so lithology and fossils should be pretty easy for you guys. Fingers crossed. Um, look at your um, sedimentary rocks. So next, you have sedimentary structures. This might be a slightly new one. So you have these things called mud cracks. They're cracks that formed in the mud. You could have ripple marks. Ripples form these, and these are cross beds. More on that later. For other characteristics, some ideas of something you could put is something like commenting on the color of the rock. For example, in a shale, a black shale has more organic matter and a gray shale doesn't. Um, or something like oxidation, which is like a rusty nail. So if you see some red around a sandstone or something, that could be a good comment to make on other characteristics. These factors to figure out depositional environment, some are really easy. Like this is obviously peat, so if it's peat, it's obviously from a swamp, easy. But other things, you might need a few other factors. For a rock like this sandstone here, you're gonna probably wanna look at fossil content and that kind of thing. So if you have some sort of shell fossil or some beachy fossil, it was probably a paleo beach. Um, but if you have a sandstone and you see cross beds, which are made from currents in a river, then it was probably a riverine environment. So it goes for shales. So something like a shale is made of fine grain particles. And remember that fine grain particles are more susceptible to currents because they're smaller and can be pushed along easier. Whereas bigger particles in sandstone or conglomerate can still fall out at high currents. Shales are gonna be carried out far to sea. So they're probably gonna be in a low energy environment but there's various ones of those. So it could be in a floodplain of a river, or it could be in an abyssal plain, and you're gonna use fossils for that again. So obviously, if you have some sort of terrestrial fossil, so like a plant leaf or some sort of thing like that, then you're gonna know that that didn't come from a marine environment. That probably came from something um, like a river floodplain or a marsh or something, something with plants. But if you have a shale, which is fine grain, with some sort of fossils like graptolites here or maybe some trilobites, then you'll know that that was a deeper water environment because that's where those kind of organisms live. Easy peasy. Head structures can also help you out with this, like uh, mud cracks had to be an area that was wet and then dried up, so the cracks form. Ripple marks had to form in a place where there was a current that was creating ripples, so obviously somewhere where ripples could form, use that. And cross beds are deposited from fluid flow, so the grains are being transported to make these features, so you know there was fluid flowing in this area. And by fluid, I mean water. Okay, but Lindsay, so like, what do I write here? So like your depositional environment, this is going to be some sort of specific thing about where this rock formation was formed. You're going to want to go back to your sedimentary rock lab and use this chart to kind of figure out those specific environments. Whereas your um, facies is going to be somewhere very broad, like a stream, a terrestrial environment, a beach, a carbonate bank, or an abyssal plain, very broad. To expand from previous labs, what we're doing this time is we're gonna map it horizontally. So you might say, okay, number one, two, and eight are all terrestrial. So I know that, and maybe three, six, and seven are two, so this area is a terrestrial environment, that corner of the map. And then you might say, oh, nine, 12, and 15 have river sediment, so maybe there's a river going through there. Cool. Okay, so part two is mostly about Walther's Law, all this hullabaloo, not really that hard. So you have two things. You have transgression, that means sea levels rising, and regression, meaning sea levels falling. So how do you tell this from rocks? Well, remember the um, how younger sediments are going to be on the top of older sediments. Um, and so we're going to use this rule to say, um, how sea level is changing, and we're going to track it through time vertically instead of horizontally like we were doing before. So like this figure here is demonstrating transgression, so you're taking a slice through there, vertical slice. Um, you have the basement rock, which is that gray part, and then next you have the little dotted um, facies, that's sandstone, that's what the little dots are, and then you have the little dashed one, that's shale. So remember, the um, sandstone on the bottom is bigger grains, so that means it was a shallower like beach environment, and then you have shales, which could be like an abyssal plain, so that's going to say, okay, right there was transgression, you went from a shallow facies like a beach to a deep facies with shale, fine grains, abyssal plain. 
For the last part of this lab, you're going to use these geologist field notes to fill in a vertical representation of geology called a strat column. So for this part, on the bottom axis, you have the size of the particles, and on the vertical axis, you have the meterage. So say I was given something like from zero to one meter, there's uh, sandstone, and it is um, the coarse grain sandstone. So I have coarse grain sandstone here from there, and then I have one to two meters is a little finer grain sandstone, so I put that there, and then maybe I have something with clay-sized particles, some sort of shale here. Um, and then, bam, we go back up to something with bigger, maybe fine sand grain particles. And then maybe a conglomerate. Um, and then maybe it's giving you some fossils. So here there's like a terrestrial leaf. So I was like, okay, maybe that's a riverine or something. Um, and then down here uh, there's some sort of shell fossil. So you're like, okay, beach. Um, and so how does that relate to sea level and Walter's Law? So you know that the sea level is lower when there are bigger grain particles. So maybe down here it's low. Uh, the grains get finer. You get maybe more towards a beach. And then, bam, the sea level goes up and you have some sort of fine grain shale things. And then it goes back down because you get back to sand. And then it goes super low because you have a conglomerate with big particles and some sort of terrestrial plant leaf thing so you just kind of fill that in and you have your sea level curve cool so for the first part of this lab we're going to take the good old geology field van driven by our favorite teacher dr owens haha <laughs> and we're going to go on an adventure so here we go oh right now we're at field site one on the map and here i am oh look at that look at that rock okay cool sean's writing down some notes in the background as we go from place on to field site two. Um, okay, here we have a sedimentary structure. Also, my friend Lily is filming. Thank you, Lily. That's who you hear in the background. Take some good notes about that rock. Wow, fossil, my bad. Moving forward to field site number three. Um, so this one has some nice fossils here. To get a closer look, if you need to pause it, you should pause it here to get a better view of the lithology, um, and it doesn't fit. Moving on to field site number four. The sample does not fizz. On to field site number five. Um, here it is. Look closely at that bad boy. Look at those rounded grains. Um, and it does, in fact, fizz with the acid. It's hard to see, but it does, I promise. Absolutely zoom into field site six. Beautiful cinematography, Lily, like, oh, look at this. Okay, so we're at field site six. Oh, look. Ding, ding, ding. Said structure alert. What is that? What could it mean? So we're going to skirt our way to seven, not eight. Look. Some uh, great fossils beach, here, beach. really. Um, and then, oh, this beautiful said structure. Hmm. And boring alert, we have a no fizzer here, no fizz. Number eight, here we go. Ooh, look at this, for Pete's sake, I don't have, what could this be? Oh, fun. And now to site nine. A lot of different rocks in this rock. <laughs> That's a good observation, actually. Honestly, just leave it in the video. Oh, Lily's a bio major. She really likes lizards, but she's never studied rock. So I was proud of her for that. And this rock doesn't fizz. Oh, site 10. Another nice set of fossils with this one. And a uh, ding, ding, ding. Set structure alert. Um, now we took a little bit of a wrong turn, but we're at 11 now. Here we go. Here is this one in all of its no fizzing glory. There's no fossils or anything. And as Sean says, it's just a hashtag boring rock. He didn't say the hashtag part. Number 12. Here we go. Uh, look real closely at this guy. Um, and it's super fine grain. And it doesn't fizz. So, you know, you got to do some tests. COVID, so you can't. Put in your mouth to see. 
Squirrel in our way to site 13. Um, whoo, these are kind of cool looking. Oh, look at that. That one's, that one's a fizzin'. Oh, and this really fizzes. Oh. We're cruising now to number 14. 14. Okay, oh, it's over here. Oh, quick, gotta play a quick song. Rocks. Okay, Interesting, okay. Um, continuing on. Another kind of boring rock with no fizz e. Number 15. Oh, look, one of my favorite rocks. Look closely at these little guys. What's inside of there? There's stuff on there. Oh, look. Oh, look at that guy. So beautiful. Um, yeah. And this guy definitely 150 billion percent fizzes. Field site number 16. Oh, beautiful fossils here. And, um, yeah, cool rock too. It doesn't fizz, but it's still a cool rock. I'll give it that. Rolling straight up this mountain to 17. Oh boy, this is the best kind of treasure you can find in the ocean. Oh, look at those guys. Oh, adorable. Um, and here's the rock. No fizz. Nada. And number 18. Here we yeah. go. Okay. Some fossils on there. See number four. And this guy doesn't no fizz. fizz. No fizz. no fizz. Look at these thin sheets. Oh, bitch, as if I can see the thin sheets. Sweet, looks like we're done with our mapping work for today. Okay, for part two, remember we're going to be having rocks that are vertically stacked on top of each other rather than horizontally spaced out. Here's layer A and layer B. We may have forgot to press record for those two, but the rest of our video. Um, and so keep in mind um, that the files with the pictures in these are on Canvas, and maybe you want to pair that with the video. I'm trying my best with them, but really it's sometimes hard to get a good picture um, on the video. Um, yeah. 